Welcome to the Masters of Engineering podcast, episode 31. My guest today is an expert on a cool new way of making small parts. He's Domenico Folia. He's the founder and CEO of NanoVoxel in Vienna, Austria. Domenico, welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. What are you doing at NanoVoxel and um, what makes you unique? So, um... At Nanovoxel, uh, we are creating the next generation of uh, microparts. Um, basically, uh, I'm coming from the consumer electronic industry. I've worked there for the last 10 years. And I know that uh, with, for miniaturization and creating always more smaller and complicated parts, um, it's a micro trend. And uh, I've seen in... Uh, um, a new technology called uh, uh, two-photon polymerization, uh, 3D printing, the potential for creating new generation of microparts. And a microparts, we define it something which is um, smaller than 20 millimeters, let's say so, a small part, but can go down to a um, few microns of size. A few microns? In size, you're printing parts that are, so you're talking about a, a 3D printing process for parts that, now the 20 millimeters I get, that I can relate to, but down to microns, you actually make things sized in microns? Yeah, we can create parts that are in the size of, um, let's say, uh, they can be bigger and have a um, single micron's feature size, but uh, um, I can uh, share some picture, we show that there are uh, smaller than the size of a uh, uh, hair, and you can still print. So it's uh, a technology which is really amazing what is capable. So you actually um, uh, solidify material in in units of two photons. Um, kind of. Let's say so. We're starting like similar to a SLA printer. Yeah. We work with the photopolymers. So we have yeah. this liquid polymer. And uh, uh, these polymers react when we receive light photons. Basically, um, standard uh, SLA, they're called one photon um, polymerization. And the light is uh, going uh, um, through a conus, basically. And uh, uh, it's at highest intensity at the, focus, at the center of the focus, but is uh, um, uh, continuing its path also after and before. Mm -hmm. um, what instead of the two photon polymerization is that the energy is uh, focalized just the very center of the focus, and therefore there is no polymerization after and not before. And therefore, I you can uh, um, move also the uh, voxel because um, a voxel is a volumetric pixel even mm -hmm. in the z direction which is uh, something ah. very different oh that's very interesting so i see so it's a focus so you get your like sla which is very familiar to us from machines like form labs is very popular for that but you focus on a much smaller part um area and I think I read in my in my reading about you that you you work with a wide range of of photopolymer materials with yeah. with resins. Yeah. Is that correct? So people can bring in the kind of resins they would use with other other processes. Yeah. So basically, two photon polymerization which we are using is using is using a different uh, uh, wavelength compared to standard uh, SLA because normally they are working with UV. Um, light um, uh, photo activator. Uh, our uh, printer is working with uh, uh, 980 uh, wavelengths so in infrared. So we need always to adapt the materials, uh, these photo materials, to the um, to the this special process. Uh, Nanovoxel is not just a two photon polymerization uh, 3D printing service uh, provider. But um, one of our main USP is that we try to replicate uh, this extraordinary resolution and uh, uh, design freedom 
we want to replicate in other processes because 3D printing is a great uh, manufacturing technology, but it's having its own limitations in terms of uh, um, productivity and material choice. Mm -hmm. We want to bottleneck that because we integrate through different replica processes, which can be uh, casting, molding, sintering, and so on, the tiles, the same precision, the same resolution into other uh, materials and processes. And therefore, we have vertically integrated all these process steps to be able to deliver to the customers the parts that he needs in the material in, that he needs as a final product in with um, processes which are also mass production compatible. So um, uh, can you tell us about some of the customer successes? Can you, can you share any of the stories that you've had in building parts? I can tell that uh, basically we have uh, two main customer groups. One is coming from the consumer electronics and the other one is coming from the uh, biomedical devices. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, there are two very different markets and both very fascinating, uh, both with great hunger of innovation and uh, uh, with different peculiarities because one is uh, uh, less regulated very fast, which is consumer electronics, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, very digital. So we go up and down and uh, every year, let's say, but in the uh, biomedical device instead is uh, longer time to market because products need to be qualified and it's very long time, but then it's much updated. One of the advantages that customers see in us is that having uh, someone that can help from the beginning to end, we can start to do 3D printing in the eye, for example, of molding. And this is simplifying a lot the process, hmm. which is giving the possibility to be much faster, uh, not only in the prototyping um, process because we have very special prototyping techniques, but also in terms of uh, approaching the project only once. <laughs> and uh, one of the example can go for microfluidics. For example, we are having resolutions in uh, for microfluidics which are not possible for anyone else because we are able to create channels theoretically of the size of uh, uh, 10, 20 microns, very often the problem wow. is not uh, printing the channels, you can go even smaller than that. Sometimes it's more challenging the removal of the resin from the channels. So Oh, sure, because you got to get the fluid out. Right, exactly. right. So you can make a 10 micron microfluidic channel. Exactly. And the, we can do it round, we can do uh, three-dimensional features, like Microfluidic, for example, at the moment is just is mostly based on uh, uh, standard lithography, and so it's everything is bidimensional because you have to create tools uh, uh, via um, photolithography and do, and do the shimming, and then uh, uh, everything mm. has to be very thin and just 2D or 2.5D. Um, with our technology, we can work at the same size where photolithography is working. So uh, single micron precision and uh, single wow. micron. But finally, we can do also uh, ramps. We can create bumps. We can create round channels. And uh, uh, for mastering, which we can then uh, replicate in uh, silicon, in uh, PDMS, or we can replicate in uh, uh, polymers via uh, injection molding. And this is everything from one hand. So do your customers actually rethink their designs? They don't just come to you and say, do you design this part? Once they discover your capabilities, do they st does the conversation start with, hey, here's a part, can you design it? And then you say, hey, but you, we can do these things. And then they go back and do they redesign based on your capabilities? This is probably the biggest challenge that we have in front of us because we are still a small company. We try to change the market. And this is something not easy for a small company to convince large OEMs, hey, you know, now there is, there are many more possibilities compared to before. And of course, um, it is something that people slowly recognize, but it will take time before they start to think in a different way. Yeah. Manufacturing technology in micro parts 
still remaining the same since 30, 40 years because uh, photolithography, CNC, ADM are, okay, they got maybe a little bit better, but they were just incremental improvements in the last, uh, in the last, uh, yeah, 30 to 40 years. I think we are convinced that 2PP is bringing the next quantum step uh, towards a new generation of manufacturing. And people can people can design new products that they wouldn't have been able to design otherwise once they understand what you can do. Uh, I'll make sure some pictures, let's say, of parts uh, which are not moldable, for example, with standard tools, mm -hmm. and which for us, we did that as an example because it took us, let's say, one to two weeks to create molded parts. And uh, um, these are uh, things that are not thinkable that if anyone would go to any other uh, molding provider to say, sorry, no, there's not manufacturing. Well, you're only what, two years old as a company? I mean, pretty amazing that you're already, already making parts. Um, yes. What's your story? How did you decide to start the company? So basically I'm working since 10 years in consumer electronics. Since five, I started my own company as a consultant for business development. So I always, uh, I'm having a, a technical background a PhD in chemical engineering and uh, uh, I'm working since 10 years in the uh, acoustic uh, department, let's say of consumer electronics. So mostly micro speakers for mobile phone, for tablets and so on. So- Oh, micro speakers for, for phones and tablets that I would I would have, like my my phone, you made, you worked on the speakers. So those would have to be very small and very high performance. Exactly. And okay. incredible how much knowledge, how many materials are tested, are used. Uh, it's uh, because actually people are underestimated is, uh, very big market with extremely a lot of competencies inside. And uh, so we are aware what are the pain in this industry. And uh, uh, during pandemic, by screening at LinkedIn, I seen that uh, our, what became then a partner company, a spin-off of the University of Vienna, uh, had created a, a new generation of uh, uh, 2PP 3D printers. And I've seen, well, if they're able to just one tenth of what they do, then there is a, a, a new way how to solve a problem uh, of the industry. Because prototyping of micro parts is still kind of unsolved issue mm -hmm. of uh, the micro industry. And so, and from there, let's say we started uh, the discussion of. Uh, uh, creating something that was not here. Now, a days, in the last two, three years, they are popping up such companies, which however use uh, um, maybe micro SLA as a, as a basic technologies. But uh, let's say we can do what micro SLA is doing and we can do much further, not in terms of uh, resolution and part size, but also we um, are developing also the further processes like Casting, molding, and so on. And um, uh, do you think that someday my cell phone, my mobile phone, or my tablet will have parts that come from nano voxels? That this is, is this that is coming? Our hope. This is what that's your have. hope. So you you really believe it's that strong that my future phone, iPhone, Android phone, whatever. Or, or tablet computer could have micro parts because we see the emphasis on weight and size in like Apple's new iPad announcement. And they make a huge deal out of how thin it is. It's the thinnest product ever in the lightest weight. So clearly micro, um, micro is um, an important part of our future and you take it to a completely um, new level. It's really inspiring. So the message I think for our audience is one, you can make parts that you could never imagine before, you know, and that's an important thing you're doing is you're expanding design space for really micro parts down to micron level features or multi-micron features, sizes up to 20 millimeters, which is not that micro. So you have a pretty wide dynamic range here. Two, you're not just 
you're not just selling a printer, you're, you're comprehensively becoming a partner in the design and manufacturing with sure. molded cast parts for the customer. I think that's these are really cool things for our audience, members of our audience to get inspired about. And so, um, uh, Domenico, I really want to thank you for being here. I want to, can you tell our, our audience, if they want to talk with you about learning more about what you do and making parts, nanovoxel.com is the website, correct? That's N-A-N-O-V-O-X-E-L.com, nanovoxel.com. You can learn a lot. Uh, great website. Really want to thank you for joining us today. It's wonderful to hear from you. Thanks for taking the time. Very inspiring story of entrepreneurship and giving our product developers out there a new set of thinking and tools to make even better products. I'll look forward to the day that my mobile phone or my tablet has parts made with nanovoxel. I really hope so. And yeah. not only consumer electronic, I hope we'll be able to- Medical. Uh, medical, exactly. Yeah, a lot of exciting medical and I imagine biotech as well. Huh? Yeah, tech yeah, machinery yeah. yeah so many applications that's it for um for today see see you all next time on masters of engineering